Marcus Kutch, uh, which is a, a lot shorter name, a much shorter name if you write it in Perlin. Uh, so the O is not really, not really supported there. Otherwise, it's quite nice. So um, welcome to my talk. Thanks a lot for um, being here after lunch, uh, which not all of us made yet, but I'm sure more people will uh, will come in while I'm talking. Uh, we'll maybe go a bit slow at the beginning, and then we'll see how 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 it goes. Um, maybe uh, before I start, is anyone here who uh, works in Russian Wikipedia? Any Wiki Wikipedia? Yes. This is great. Okay, two I, I can't. Okay, so this talk is going to be about uh, Wikidata, the next big thing for Wikipedia, hopefully, and um, also, of course, about semantic uh, web and uh, research and technology implications that this had. But um, let me first start with a bit of motivation. Imagine a world in which every single person is given free access to the sum of all human knowledge. That's our mission. Now, whose mission, whose mission is that? Well, it's the mission of uh, Wikimedia. Wikimedia is the organization running Wikipedia, and in fact, quite a few more projects uh, like Wikipedia. Wikipedia is most well known, but uh, if you look at uh, wikimedia.org, you can see that there are quite a number of other projects uh, covering other topics, uh, which also happen in that, in that space. And of course, Wikipedia these days is very well known. Uh, five or uh, even uh, maybe seven years ago when I gave these talks, uh, I used to start by asking who here knows Wikipedia. Um, this now seems to be obsolete uh, because Wikipedia is, such a, is an enormously successful project. 20 million plus articles, 1.5 billion different edits. This is versions of these articles. More than 280 different languages global reach of uh, about 500 million views per day, uh, 480 million unique visitors per month. So an uh, incredibly successful project, especially if you consider the fact that it's all run by uh, a charitable organization and a lot of volunteers. Uh, so this is a success, certainly. On the other hand, if we look at Wikipedia today, there are also a number of problems. And um, again, five years ago or seven years ago, uh, the main problem was to keep the servers running, right? So when we talked at, at Wikipedia meetings, uh, there was usually an issue how many, how many percent of the time has Wikipedia actually been up this year. Uh, so there was a big news article it, it tended to break down. And these days, only if maybe Michael Jackson dies, we, we get such problems again. But normally, it, it usually is quite stable. On the other hand, we do have a lot of other problems. Uh, in particular, problem number one, uh, content quality. Uh, certainly, uh, all of you have heard about these uh, issues uh, again and again, new stories uh, with problems in Wikipedia articles. And uh, often these problems are on a quite high level, but it starts even on a very low quality maintenance uh, level, where you have to fight spam, uh, remove vandalism, avoid manipulation, update all this old content, because the bigger and bigger Wikipedia becomes, the more difficult it becomes, obviously, to keep the content fresh. There's some kind of bit rot going on there. You have to patrol the articles a lot to fix errors that just happen because things have changed in the world. And, of course, you also have to just fix the normal errors that somebody has introduced when writing them. So this is a major concern, and maybe the biggest concern for Wikipedia these days. Um, now, the obvious answer to that would be, well, uh, we have an army of contributors, don't we? And uh, they have the wisdom of the crowd. So somehow this is all going to fix itself because we have this amazing and inexplicable uh, community that is able to uh, achieve whatever it wants to achieve, including such uh, pity little tasks like fixing errors. But if we look at the statistics that there are now here, for example, for the English Wikipedia, uh, this is the article count. Uh, we can see that Wikipedia, even in English, where it's already very big, continues to grow. So the blue line here is the um, number of articles, and you see there's a very slight slope going upwards here. The red line is the increase in articles per time. So you see there's a constant, steady, linear increase of content, still these days. Now if we compare that to the number of contributors, in this case active users in English, we'll see that 
there the increase is not so obvious. Rather, it could even be interpreted as a decrease. I would rather like to interpret it as a stagnation, maybe. So we see that there are like uh, 130,000 numbers are not very visible, 130,000 people worldwide which uh, write English Wikipedia. And this number is not growing. And likewise, if you look at the number of edits that are made, the red line here at the bottom are the edits per time, fairly constant with some spikes also due to measurement methods, of course. And uh, we see basically we do not have an increase in edits, but we do have an increase in content. Somebody has to maintain all this. So how are we going to do that? So um, what we see here is even for such an enormously successful project like Wikipedia, the crowds are not really enough. We have an ever-increasing amount of content with an ever-increasing amount of maintenance, and uh, on the other hand, a stabilizing number of contributors. Problem two, um, language diversity. Of course, diversity of languages is not really a problem. It's actually a great thing. Wikipedia has achieved a lot there. But um, it's not always an easy situation to be in. We have, at the moment, 285 languages, uh, each of which have their own edition of Wikipedia. German, English, French, the Dutch, uh, very big uh, examples, all with more than one million articles. Russian almost getting there, like some 900,000 at the moment, growing fast, uh, soon to be about one million too, I think. Uh, but then there are also 40 more languages which are fairly big, but not that large, and 112 languages which are rather small still, but have already more than 10,000 articles. Now, uh, still this makes up only half of the 285 languages, and we see that there are many places where we just don't have any uh, uh, very large community or content at all. So we get there, of course, a basic quality problem again, because even uh, basic facts do not usually agree across the languages. So we have now these 280 different versions of Wikipedia, and they all say something, and rarely it's uh, really in complete agreement. And the second issue is that uh, we also have a coverage problem, right? So in many cases, one would of course expect naively somehow English is the biggest one, right? So everything that is found in any Wikipedia should also be there in English. But that's not the case. In fact, it is, for example, in German Wikipedia, almost half of the articles that are covered in German are not even mentioned in English. So it's, it's certainly not the case that an English reader can find all the information, it, one still would have to go to some other languages to find uh, topics which are more relevant in that language. We can see that, for example, if you look at a world map now, uh, more or less visible uh, here on the, on the Beamer, where we mark up the locations of Wikipedia articles. So many Wikipedia articles have a location, and we can just take all the data and show, make a little dot at the point where this article talks about if there is any geolocation included. And we can see that English has a fairly selective coverage of the world. We have a lot of uh, information about English-speaking countries, also a lot of information about other countries, um, but certainly not an even coverage. If we go to other languages, like French, for example, we see it becomes a lot more focused. On the other hand, here on the very top of Scandinavia, there's a bright spot. For some reason, the French seem to be very interested in that uh, region. Uh, we don't know why. Uh, this is not the same in English, right? So we don't find these points there. So English is somehow missing them. Smaller languages like Catalan, uh, obviously very pop very uh, frequent in, in, in regions of Spain, but also in the US. On the other hand, Italian, mainly focused on Italy, same with Greece. Russian, uh, much more distributed, a bit dark here, but that's also because Russia is very big, and uh, of course the density doesn't show here. But uh, if the, uh, if the uh, image would be a bit better, you can see that the whole world is evenly, or is well covered, better than certainly in uh, Greece, for example. Chinese, again, different pattern. But this is English. And so all of these things are slightly different, and we can't say that these uh, different languages really agree or have the same content. Big problem. Um, problem number three, and the last one I want to show you in this uh, motivation, now that we also are, are getting more complete here in the audience, um, is information access. So I said that one of the main goals of Wikipedia is to enable the access to all information, right? So, so what kind of access does that give us? Well, we could, for example, say, well, Wikipedia certainly has articles about all cities, uh, their populations, and their mayors, at least all bigger cities. You find that, in, even in English. And so the obvious question would be, 
let's just try to access this information and ask for a list of the world's 10 largest cities that have a female mayor. It's not the most basic question maybe, but certainly this is something which could be interesting and if you would like to answer, it's certainly there, isn't it? The knowledge is free and everybody can use it. So how do we go about finding that? Well, we could go to the search page and uh, enter our question, right? So uh, let's see what this gives us. Actually, the search isn't too stupid. Surprisingly, of course it doesn't give us the answer, but at least it recognizes that somehow large cities are involved here and it gives us some clues on where to find them. But that's not really the answer. Um, Wikipedia's answer to that question to some extent are lists. So lists are articles that list the result of a complex uh, information uh, query. So some uh, query like the one we just asked for. For example, we can easily use such a list article to find uh, the largest cities of the world. So there's an article about world largest cities. Uh, in fact, there's also an article about the list of cities proper by population, which uh, is just including the city within its bounds. There's also a list of uh, world largest municipalities by population, a list of uh, metropolitan areas by population, a list of urban agglomerations by populations based on uh, information of the United Nations. And, of course, there are many other lists regarding specific countries. For example, there's a list of largest cities and second largest cities by country. There's a list of cities in the European Union with more than 100,000 inhabitants, a list of cities in France and Russia by population, a list of communes in France with over 20,000 inhabitants based on the 2006 census, and a list of largest European cities in history, a list of cities claimed to be built on seven hills, a list of fictional towns and villages, a list, list, list of fictional towns in literature, a list of fictional cats in literature, a list of animals with uh, fake diplomas, uh, a list of wartime cross-dressers, you name it. Basically, every time, everything you could uh, possibly think of uh, as being worth being listed uh, is also somewhere in Wikipedia, maybe. Not quite, of course not quite, because you can never complete these lists, right? There's always going to be something that is not easy to find. Uh, in particular, again, we get here the language problem because um, popular lists, like the, the famous list of inventors killed by their own invention, uh, can be found in many different languages, in fact, and have to be updated and translated all the time in all of these languages. I think Russian is not there yet, so uh, certainly some, some tasks to do for the Russian community to, to update this list. Um, now, how do we does that solve our problem? Well, first of all, the problem, of course, is how to find even the right list for our task. We sort of have seen that search is not the right approach, so in Wikipedia we have the list of lists of lists and uh, category lists, which we can use to find lists of people, lists of people by occupation, and maybe we can get to our mayors. Maybe indeed we have here the list of office holders, lists of mayors, and lists of first female mayors. So even this is in there, but unfortunately, the original question I asked was, what are the biggest cities in the world that have female mayors, not the first female mayors? And this just isn't there. So unfortunately, our conclusion must be here um, that Wikipedia does not have all the answers yet. Okay, so let's revisit this initial motivation that I showed. Uh, how far are we here? Well, First of all, I've said that there are many errors uh, we have to fix, so it's not always easy to, to provide even the access to the existing knowledge. Then, this access was meant to be for every single person, but we have seen that it's actually quite language specific. It depends on which languages you speak, what kind of information you can access. And certainly, we don't really get the sum of all uh, human knowledge. We want to get a heap of all of human knowledge, which is very hard to query or to inspect. And of course, in semantic technologies, we immediately see that there's a big data management problem here, that somehow we have information, but it's managed in a way which makes it very hard to work with it, to process it, and to uh, exploit it. OK, but this was my motivation. And uh, this brings us to the project I want to talk about, namely Wikidata, which is uh, setting out to address some of these problems. and. Uh, Hopefully, we will succeed in improving the situation. If not fixing it, certainly this is still a very long way to fix it completely, but uh, improve it. Wikidata is a project by the Wikimedia Foundation. So it's one project, uh, one of these many projects that Wikipedia 
uh, Wikimedia Rocks, and uh, it's going to be a sister project of Wikipedia. So it's hosted on the same servers, uh, but has a different URL. The goal of Wikidata is to provide a database uh, of the world's knowledge that anyone can have. I think that this can probably just say database here and you have some kind of idea what uh, kind of project that is. The goal also is to collect references and quotes about these data articles. So, uh, you know, in Wikipedia, everything should have a source. Citation needed is one of the popular uh, slogans of English Wikipedia. Uh, it is not a site where people should do research, but rather everything should have a um, support from some other publication or trustworthy source. Also, Wikidata tries to engage in communities that can actually sustain such a database and thus increase quality and lower the maintenance cost of Wikipedia and related projects. And finally, um, since everything in Wikipedia is open and open source, the project will also deliver relevant software and best practices to the community. So it's not just about one site, it's in fact, hopefully, if things go well, about many thousands or hundreds of thousands of sites as we have it now for uh, wikis as such. Currently, this endeavor is uh, tackled by this team of uh, developers based in Berlin at Wikimedia Germany, uh, led by Danny Manichich, the technical director. Uh, we have uh, these 12 people here, many of them programmers, some community managers, managers, and uh, other technical support uh, for the project, and they are working full time for the course of one year, uh, 12 months short time to get this project done. Uh, the funding for this is 1.3 million euro. Uh, three organizations have donated to make that possible. Uh, the Al Institute uh, of Artificial Intelligence, run by Paul L. Born uh, and Betty Moore Foundation, you may have heard of uh, Moore's, Moore's Law, uh, and, and Google. Obviously, there are some interesting application fields here as well uh, for search with such kind of uh, Okay, so I said what we are going to do is database that anyone can edit. So the easiest way to explain that is to show you uh, what we envision. Basically, this is a mock-up of how this page, this site, could look. Uh, this is at the moment not yet implemented in this way, but rather this is a conceptual uh, depiction of how such a web page could look. You can see that uh, it is very similar to Wikipedia. We have a uh, wiki-like uh, layout, but instead of an article, we have a um, list of many different facts about a certain subject. Here in this case, it's about Berlin, the capital of Germany, and we have a list of facts. And if you think about uh, legal data or RDF based data, you can read many of them as property value pairs. And think of, of triple seal. So Berlin is, a con is on the continent of Europe, is uh, in the country Germany, has a population of a certain number has a certain contract, prefix, and so on. Here there's a mock-up of uh, auto-completion, which will happen. So basically, people will go there and add new values to this type of tabular uh, depiction of information. <coughs> if we look at this a bit closer, we see that um, statements are actually a bit more complicated than mere triples. So of course, we do have here a uh, population number, uh, which is a certain number. But it also says, as of November 30, 2011, method extrapolation, and there's a source here, and there's even another value, right? So population is not a functional property here. We have multiple values. Um, yet, even with this complexity, it's, I hope for humans, at least easy to understand what we mean here. So um, the population is some kind of property, and these properties will be defined in the system very much in the same way that you would define properties in an ontology that you model. And uh, these properties can have values. Values might also involve units or accuracy or other complex values that are not just plain numbers. And then in addition, you have these sources that tell you what uh, the source of one particular statement is, or the sources. In this case, maybe there are two sources uh, for this particular statement. And finally, um, we have these little small lines below every value which give us additional detail about this statement. Then basically, we could also use it as property value pairs. So 
since as of November 30, 2011, method is a property extrapolation study. And I already mentioned that several values which may be contradicting, at least from an from a, a informal point of view, of course, there's no logical contradiction here, but uh, there might be some kind of contradiction for humans seeing that there are two different population numbers for one thing. So this is all supported. And uh, in fact, even more supported uh, because there's not only a need to say that a certain property has a certain value, there's also a need to say that a property has some unknown value. For example, many people have died under unclear circumstances, but since they have lived hundreds of years ago, we know that they certainly are dead by now, but we cannot give a particular date. Now, if we search for all people who have died, we certainly want to find those among them. And therefore, it makes sense to allow for even unknown property values, wild powers. Um, also, of course, in, an, uh, in a system like Wikipedia and Wikidata as well, uh, there must be an open world assumption. We will never have complete data. It would be wrong to assume that persons who don't have any children in the database don't have children. It just uh, means that uh, maybe nobody had any time to enter this children yet. So there must be a way to say explicitly that somebody does not have children. And so we should be able to say that a certain property has no value. Now all of this is somehow supported in uh, OWL, in fact. So uh, we already have a formalism that can represent much of this. Uh, interestingly, RDF alone will not really be enough, right? You can't, in RDF, for example, you cannot say that somebody has no children. And only uh, unknown property values, maybe you can still get uh, with the help of blank notes. But uh, saying that there's no property value is not possible. So we even need OWL here. And you see that things are a bit more complicated than uh, in many other applications of uh, semantic technologies in Polya. Moreover, if you look at the statement with all the additional information given here, um, you also see that it's not quite a triple. And if you think about how to encode this in LDF, there are certainly various ways of doing it, but uh, None of that is really completely natural or immediate. You have some choice here how to model things. And, um, whatever you do, you will need auxiliary nodes, um, auxiliary resources in your RDF graph to connect the triples, because this is not just triple information. And uh, so certainly it will be interesting to see how this data is going to be processed by current applications, because it's not more complicated than uh, than many data we currently work with, but that's what you get when you try to capture the real world. We did have a hard time making the decisions on what to support and what not to support, obviously, but if you just go through Wikipedia and look at the data given there, even in tables, you see that this is really kind of the minimum of uh, complexity that we need to capture a relevant amount of, uh, of data as it's now uh, in, the, uh, in the system already. Also, um, I mentioned the problem with language diversity, and so the obvious question for us could be, can we share more data across languages? Because this is data, right? So it is international. We have a population number of a country, and it will probably be the same number in every language. Maybe you write numbers differently in some languages, but it will be the same value. Birthdays of persons, locations of monuments, mayors of cities, all of this is international data. And so um, one would like to share it across languages and thus make many more languages able to participate in the data that is collected here uh, and remove the boundaries between these different uh, language additions that we currently have. Now this fortunately isn't completely a new idea but in Wikipedia we already have a project that does a very similar uh, thing but not for data but for images. It's this uh, project called Wikimedia Commons um, not perceived by many, but used by many. It's one of the top 200 websites still, and uh, currently used as the main image repository for all Wikipedia languages. Because you have the same with images, right? So images are also used in many languages, and it's stupid to have copies of them in every single language edition. And so you have a lot of very uh, beautiful and, and widely uh, selected uh, pictures that are available for free. And, uh, quite for, for many purposes they are used these days, even outside of Wikipedia. 
So in a way, we could say that what we want to do with Wikidata is similar to a uh, Commons for data, right? So we want to have one centralized multilingual site that posts all data that is uh, edited by uh, or used in any language edition of Wikipedia. And it is easy to imagine this if you have this mock-up in English, you could easily translate it into a mock-up in German. And what you see here is basically the interface language changed and of course the properties need to have language labels in different languages, but that's really a minor uh, uh, detail that can easily be accommodated. Somebody has got to translate it, but you have to translate the property for population only once and you will get thousands and millions maybe of population numbers in your language for your uh, own readers to use uh, immediately without having to anchor them. So uh, the more accurate thing to say here is a database that anyone can edit in any language. And currently it turns out that uh, this is a lot of work, interface type already, and the team in Berlin is having a hard time uh, supporting all these languages. Um, I think more than 500 interface languages are now supported, not just the 280 languages that Wikipedia has uh, as old encyclopedias. And um, this is not trivial, we've heard about this in the morning a bit. Uh, you have languages writing from right to left, others writing from left to right. Uh, many technical things have to be solved, so it, it, uh, it's looking very good already. So now you know that basically I basically know what kind of project Wikidata is and what the goal of Wikidata is as a whole. There are some obvious questions that people continue to ask us. Uh, first question, why not take the data from Wikipedia, right? So we already have the data there. We have population number there. Can't we just use it uh, instead of making a new site where people have to re-enter the data manually uh, instead of uh, taking advantage of what's there now. Well, I don't have to explain much here. Basically, if you go as a human as a, to an article, of course, you have a lot of information in there. For example, here's the Berlin, Berlin article, and you can uh, learn from this article that there's a certain population, a certain location, a mayor, and uh, an area of the city, and uh, you will be able to answer many complicated questions, like instead of female mayor, maybe. But um, on the other hand, for computers, the situation is much more obscure. So computers see the same article like an alien language. By the way, is there anybody here who knows what language that is? Georgian. Georgian. Can, can you read it even? No. Okay, but at least, I mean, that's some, something. That's Georgian. Beautiful script, but uh, completely unintelligible uh, to me, at least. And so if you look at a, an article in Georgian, and you can guess, if you don't speak Jordan, at least what a computer has to achieve in order to extract the data here. Of course, there are a lot of things in here. There are numbers, there are names of other articles, there are numbers with some units, maybe even, that you can make out, but you don't know what they mean. You don't have any connections. And um, it is very difficult to find out what this really is. So in other words, information extraction is difficult, which is, of course, well known. And uh, you have seen that there are various related projects uh, doing research on just that because it's a really difficult task. Wikipedia was introduced in the morning. Um, there's also Yago, Yago 2. Maybe these, I think, are, are the major projects. Many smaller efforts have been made to mine Wikipedia for certain information. Now, these approaches have some limitations. Data quality varies, of course, because it's such a difficult task. You are never 100% sure that what you extract is true. Um, there's very little or no alignment across languages, so it's uh, difficult to compare the population in one language with the population in another language because you first have to map population as a property to some kind of ontology so you can know that uh, it's the same property used in another language. It's very difficult to extract source information from this because often you just get the fact but you don't know who said so and where and, and how exactly is that supported the statement. And Kind of see the other side of the problem of data quality is limited coverage. So if you try to improve your data quality, you usually have to focus on certain uh, more specific cases, and uh, you cannot extract all data in that way. So that's difficult. On the other hand, these projects certainly did have an impact on Wikidata because, for one thing, they have shown the potential that Wikipedia data has, even if it's not perfect, even if it's limited in certain ways. 
you can see already from DBpedia and Yago what you can do with that. And this has certainly helped people to see what we all know already, namely that semantic data is a valuable resource which has huge opportunities for, for many applications. And of course, secondly, also it gives us some insight at least in the kind of data we expect. We, it gives us some idea of size, some idea of distribution, which we find quite useful now that we develop a system and have to decide what dimensions we, we should uh, build it for. Okay, so uh, let's say we are convinced that just taking DBpedia and, and using it as a, a database as such does not uh, achieve these goals yet, but couldn't we still take the data from Wikipedia? Could we still use Semantic Media Wiki, which uh, I suppose some of you know, uh, which is an extension to the software underlying Wikipedia, which allows users to enter data on these sites. So, um, Semantic Media Wiki as such is a quite a long-standing project. It's like seven years old now, I think. Um, free and open source extension to the software underlying Wikipedia. Um, 400 plus websites, this is really kind of a random number because it's an open source project, we really have no idea how many sites there are. It's just 400 plus, we really completely know of. Many of them also in industry, like for example at Pfizer or at Deutsche Telekom and other uh, industrial uh, users where you don't actually have access to the site and you can't find out about it if you don't have any personal contact. Uh, it has been translated into many languages, has a worldwide community. I just checked, we have like about um, 28 active code contributors at the moment, so that's developers. Um, currently we have like three core developers uh, managing the project, one of, uh, one of them myself and the other one, uh, the dog. And commercial support is available, there are various companies and there are also many extensions. So somehow this seems to be a, a, an interesting project to use, right? So uh, you certainly you have a lot of experience there already and many users. Um, but when we looked at Wikipedia, we found that there's a lot of things that we would like to do differently now in Wikipedia. When we started Semantic Media Wiki seven years ago, we thought, yeah, this is our main goal, doing the, the semantic Wikipedia, right? There's a paper called like that. But over time, we found that, in fact, it's not so good to have all the data local for every language, because we have to manage it in every language individually. It's much nicer to have a common data repository that is shared. But if you do that, you have to devise the whole system uh, multilingual instead of monolingual. And also, once you have decided to make a special system just for data, it doesn't make much sense to force people to enter wiki text there. You don't want it to be edited like Wikipedia. You can make them much simpler if you know that all your data is structured. So you can give them pretty forms and uh, make auto-completion available so that entering data is really much simpler than learning about wiki text or editing Wikipedia is at the moment. On the other hand, there's obviously a strong personal relationship here. We have um, all of the core developers are involved in uh, Wikidata. Danny, who is the technical director, is one of the founders of the Many Media Wiki. And many people on the Wikidata team have experiences with the system, so we, we can certainly draw from a lot of experiences with this type of technology. We also plan to share code, so there uh, will be an effort to make the software projects compatible on a software level, as far as this is possible. And Maybe in the future, hopefully, we also can manage to do a certain amount of data sharing. So if a project wants to use both Wikidata for form-based input and semantic media wiki for inline annotations, maybe this should be possible and allow you to query over both of these data sources. So yeah, there's a lot of synergies, but it's not quite the same. So let me tell you a bit about uh, what you can expect and when you can expect it, maybe. Uh, project plan of Wikidata. Uh, so the whole project is planned to happen in three phases. Uh, phase one, language links. Phase two, in info box. Phase three, inline queries. Um, language links, most of you should have seen somewhere. So if you look at the left hand side of any Wikipedia article, or most at least, or many, not mostly, but uh, many of them, uh, you find a long, long list of languages which also have an article about that subject. Now, how is this list maintained? Well, it's maintained by having a long, long list of language links in the article code. And now you would wonder, well, but 
the article exists in many languages, right? So um, which, where do you find these language links? Well, in all of them. So you have basically a quadratic number of language links. Every language has links to all other languages. And there are programs which all day long synchronize these links automatically. It's sometimes very hard to change a link because it might be some robot uh, comes along and fixes it before you even manage to change it in half of the 280 languages. So um, it's actually a big um, redundancy and, and maintenance problem to have it like that. So the first step of Wikidata will be to uh, generate a centralized repository for this type of information where you just have uh, one entity on this Wikidata database and it stores all these language links, nothing more uh, than this simple task. But already uh, this requires quite some, some input. This now is actually not a mock-up but a real screenshot some weeks ago. Um, you can also find all of this online, by the way. Wikidata has online demonstration servers where you can always see the latest uh, development code running. And so this is the kind of input form that currently exists here to create language links to other languages. And you see here, again, it gives you some nice auto completion which you don't currently have if you go into Wikitext and just type it manually again. So um, this will set up an entity base which I think is a, is a really great and valuable resource as such because it gives you a list of terms and topics people are interested in in all languages. I mean, how often have people used Wikipedia to translate a term? You go to your, the term in your language, then look into the language link to the other language. It's not what you normally find in dictionaries because these are specialist terms. So that's interesting as such even without any data. Now we go to the other side of the article. There you often have these info boxes, which also have been harvested in the DBpedia project to get information from it, which is really, in a way, the primary place where we currently find data in uh, Wikitext. Again, if we look at how this data is managed, we see that in the article, uh, it all looks rather messy. So there's a large, uh, technically looking piece of text where all these values are assigned. And if you want to make a change, you first have to figure out what kind of variable you have to change here in order to uh, achieve any effect on the display. So the second stage of Wiki uh, data will be to enable people to enter this data in Wikidata, as I showed you before in the mock-up, and then also to pull this data from this central database site into any language edition of Wikipedia uh, to be displayed there. So instead of having the value in all the info boxes, you will have at this position just a little piece of code, which is probably not much more readable than what we currently have. Maybe even slightly less, but the nice thing about this code is that it's not going to be uh, to require update, because if you want to change something, you just go to Wikidata, edit a nice little form, and uh, the data will change. So this is phase two. Just Simple queries for simple uh, single facts that should be retrieved. And phase three then finally is to uh, tackle this information access problem which I uh, explained to you about at the beginning. All these lists in Wikipedia. So how can we answer complicated queries automatically and relate it uh, and then insert the results of this into Wikipedia. So basically we want to abolish the lists in Wikipedia or not really maybe the articles, but abolish the manual maintained, manually maintained uh, uh, tables in these articles and replace them by a query which just automatically computes the right result for you and updates this continuous. Obviously you can have many different formats if you just look at what we have in the Mandibilia wiki, these are all screenshots. Uh, there are endless possibilities of how to display data once you have data in a structured form that is machine readable. So all of this is implemented and is used on some wikis to uh, give people access to their data. And all of this could also happen on Wikipedia without the significant maintenance overhead that you would currently get if you wanted to do any of this uh, in Wikipedia. However, uh, query is never easy and uh, details of this are still under development. So the question is what kind of query language, how expressive will it be, how will uh, the results be cached, um, there will probably be a lot of caching involved and maybe it, it might even be the case that the lists are themselves created on Wikidata. 
So it might be that Wikidata is not only a database which stores a lot of information fact, or facts, but also stores a lot of queries of things people want to know about. And these queries are answered, pre-computed, and then embedded into Wikipedia, which makes it much easier for us to update it dynamically and also uh, might be an interesting repository to see what people are searching for or what kind of information is, is true. Okay, but details under development, we are not yet uh, in phase three. In fact, uh, currently we are at the end of phase one. Deployment is, um, is uh, planned, so there are some security reviews to go through, and then the Hungarian Wikipedia will be the first language edition of Wikipedia to enable this uh, inter-language link extension. Hopefully the second one will be the Hebrew, if this uh, is confirmed by the community, if not, it will be Italian. And after these two have been tried and tested, we will go to English. So that's kind of the plan in the next few months, and actually weeks, talking about the Hungarian one. Okay, but then phase two is currently developed, and phase three will come up. Okay, maybe I should also say something about the um, timeline overall. The project as such has started this April. So this is when this, what these 12 months that I've talked about have begun, and so by next April, everything will be over. Uh, one or the other way. Okay. So I kind of managed to catch up some of the times that I uh, that we started later, but I would also like to hear some of your questions, of course, and so I hope I can, uh, can uh, have some of them and also answer some of them, maybe. Uh, because I think Wikidata really has implications to our work and to many people's work in academia, but especially in semantic web technologies that are so broad that it's really hard to cover them in a talk or even to foresee them at the moment because there will be so, such a mass of data and such a huge amount of uh, contribution to it, hopefully, uh, that it is difficult to know what really is going to happen. If you look at simply the impact it will have on Wikipedia and on the social structures of Wikipedia, well, obviously there will be a globally shared information resource with shared terms and concepts, which I think is a philosophically interesting thing already. If all languages and all cultures of the world try to agree on certain concepts that they want to describe, because that's not, not always obvious. If you look at the language links at the moment, you see that they are not one-to-one -one and one-to, but rather there are sometimes differences in granularity, there are sometimes topics which are slightly different. Some Wikipedia might have an article about a certain brand of car, another Wikipedia has not just this one article, but has six or seven articles about different manufacturing uh, years of this same car, which have slightly different data associated with them. So this will be very interesting. It's going to be multilingual and multicultural. I think the multilingual part will be a huge benefit to many languages, especially to the smaller ones, because they will get immediate access, or almost immediate access, to the data that even the largest communities can currently create. So it will get, give some languages which currently do not have the contribution, contribution power to create this amount of data by themselves, access to all of the data in their native language, because translation is, is much less work than uh, creating it in the first place. Also an interesting social effect is that there's a much smaller contribution size. Currently, if you want to go to Wikipedia and edit something, even if it's just a typo, you have to press edit, then you are presented with a huge plot of text. You have to figure out where the thing is that you wanted to change it. You have to understand basically how all this works in order to make even small changes. Wikidata will simplify that further by giving you a simple form. You can just click on anything, change it, type in a new number, press save, and it's done. And so hopefully we can also motivate more people to join in that effort than we can. I already mentioned the languages, and of course it's free for all, which gives interesting opportunities also for commercial applications, because uh, much of this data could be useful uh, in one or the other uh, company as well. And if it's free, it also implies it's free for commercial use. For us, of course, uh, the main interests are heaps of data. Uh, free, machine accessible, we will have exports in RDF and OWL. We will also have exports in other formats. There's a JSON API that you can use for web services. And um, basically, the general goal is to provide every format that somebody uh, could be interested in over time. I mean, there's certainly a list of priorities here, but uh, basically, we want to make it as accessible as possible. And if you look at it, actually, there's not just one data set. 
could not think of Wikidata as one big file of RDF, for example. But rather, there are very different things you could get out of this, and we will also have multiple exports that cover several things. For example, even if you just export the interlanguage things, just the alignments of terms across languages with their labels, you can already make great use of this uh, in uh, computational linguistics, for example, or in, in other uh, contexts where you need to have language alignments. Or even only if you want to build an auto-completion box for some search engine and don't have a big dictionary of interesting terms in Georgian, for example. Um, also, hopefully, it will have useful facts about the world. We don't know yet. You have seen that um, there are many population numbers for one city. So this, is, this obviously impacts usefulness. So the more information you have, the harder it might be to, to actually use it. And we will have mechanisms to have, allow people to flag some particular facts as being most important. And we hope that these most important facts will uh, be useful as such if you want to know the truth, whatever that is, about reality, whatever that is. Uh, on the other hand, you can also take all the data with all its contradictory information, all its plurality and all its complexity, and all the references which are attached to it, and try to analyze it, try to understand who says what, what different opinions exist, what, which topics are maybe controversial, and there's fields for researchers like us to work in and many other researchers outside of it. So, hopefully I have convinced you that with this project, if all goes well, we don't know yet if anybody will edit it, maybe we just launch the site and it stays empty. Um, but if it goes well, we are a step closer to that vision I presented to you initially, and uh, I hope you got interested and find some more information if you want uh, in the many sources. We have a very open uh, community here. We have all information about the project and its progress online. You can join in, you can help and develop if you want. And you can, of course, make use of all the data with your own ideas. Thank you very much. <laughs> Questions, please. Yeah. How do you support different units of measure? For example, uh, if you have American people, they want to see the effects in miles, kilometers, etc. And for other countries, they need to measure in different units of measure. Um, so uh, the experience in uh, Semantic Media Wiki, we have gathered some experience with that, uh, that we allow people to declare units of measurement with the properties. So basically, unit information will be attached to the properties. What is not completely clear yet is how exactly it will look. In most cases, you can trans convert between units in a linear way. In many cases, it's even fixed and known because it's somehow standardized. So maybe this will be built in. Um, we haven't completely decided how much control the user is going to have over it. I think it, our main goal is to have uh, most of the control here for the user. Because even in fictional areas, like in Star Trek universe, you have units which nobody have, has ever found in a textbook, but still they, they know how to convert between them. And they want to have support for that. So we will have, leave it pretty open. Um, a related question and problem is precision, because miles and kilometers don't convert very well, and if somebody just says it's roughly 100 miles, the number in kilometers will have a lot of uh, decimal digits, and we have to find a good solution for that. Uh, that's up to discussion. Uh, ideas are, are very well. Marcus, uh, do you plan to make uh, mappings to other data sets in outside of the, the wiki data, like geo names or other interesting data sets? Um, yeah, not at the moment, because at the moment we create a software for editing data, we don't have data. So we can't map it to anything. So I think mapping it to other things will be the goal of projects which can start as soon as there is data to map. And um, I think this will then be a joint effort of many projects to map into Wikidata and to map from Wikidata. Uh, also in the biosciences and life sciences, you have a lot of interesting identifiers. And in fact, even in Wikipedia, if you go and uh, look at any um, medicine topic, for example, or uh, genetic research topic, for example, you can see a lot of scientific identifiers there which are already included in the text. So they already use this mapping. 
it's just done on a very informal level, so you can't really exploit it easily. But um, I'm sure there will be a lot of mappings to many areas. Very interesting to see that. But not, in, not as part of our efforts. That's maybe the main point. Uh, but first, thanks for the talk. That was uh, quite interesting, and I can't wait to see what comes out of it. Uh, but I have uh, like one very, uh, well, maybe not very simple question, but uh, there's a project called Freebase, uh, which was bought by Google some time ago. So what would you say the main difference between this uh, big data and Freebase is? Um, yeah, good point. Uh, Freebase is maybe of all the projects, including the many media we need, uh, that are somehow related to this field is the one which might be closest to what we try to do because it is a database website, right? You go there and you edit a database. And um, the main difference of Freebase is that the schema that is used to edit this database is much more um, strictly controlled. So there's, it, Freebase, in many ways, is more like filling out a, um, a template in Wikipedia than just adding single properties. So the, the granularity of data is slightly different. You have a data record about cars and you enter all the information there. You don't have a property value model. We are a bit more um, normalized in that sense, going towards the approach of semantic web data where you have very small units of information that you can compose in arbitrary ways. And also related to that, I think uh, our language support is very, very much wider and, and broader than semantic. But yeah, it, it certainly has similar goals in some area. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? I'd like, I'd like to ask a question. Uh, you mentioned that uh, you try to create a shared vocabulary and properties. But as I understand, currently there are a great variety of uh, similar uh, synonymous properties and concepts in uh, for example, Wikipedia and so on. How do you plan to deal with uh, these uh, issues? Like the cooperative, cooperative on those the engineering. Yeah, so um, the question was a bit how can we manage the, how can we align different properties, maybe also from different areas. So basically, Wikipedia is, covers all areas of human knowledge somehow of encyclopedia tick interest at least. And obviously different sub-communities there have overlapping interests but don't use the same vocabulary maybe. So there is a question here, how can we achieve that? And well, my first answer is we don't because we are just the software developers, we are not in charge of content. But on the other hand, that would be a bit too easy. Uh, we as software developers obviously have to think about how to, which tools to provide to help people to do that. So for example, if you notice that this property and this property is actually the same, and you already have 10,000 facts for each, how can the software help you to align them? Um, what we currently already have built in, into the first phase are aliases. So every um, entity, as we call it, currently these are just the pages, the items that we have seen like Berlin, has not just a main label and text, but also has aliases. So it can have multiple synonymous labels which are used in, uh, in many places. And so it allows you to have different terms for the same thing, but you have to agree on one major. But in the end, the alignment, the, real, the ontology engineering work, as you have called it, will really happen in the community and needs discussion from experts with experts. And I'm actually pretty confident that this will work out quite well. If you already, if you look at um, Wikipedia these days, if you go to any page which you think is conceptually problematic from an ontology engineering point of view, like Superman, What's Superman? Is it a comic character? Is it a literary figure? Is it maybe a role in a movie? You see that actually all of these different interpretations of the subject have their own articles. People have already realized that there are many facets to the same thing. And I think the discussions that go on on this ontological, in the sense of philosophy, uh, philosophical level, uh, in Wikipedia are, are quite elaborated at once. So I, I have uh, high esteem of the community in that respect, and I think they, they will be good ontology engineers.